We now introduce the concept of spanning. Now that we understand what subspaces are and general vector spaces are, we can now start looking at the concept of spanning. So, um, imagine it this way that uh, if you were to take any vectors, a set of vectors S, let's define S as a set of vectors um, V1, V2, and so on up to Vr. Okay let's say we have a set of vectors v1, v2, vr, then um, if we were to look at something, if we were to look at the linear combinations of these vectors, so in other words, if we were to look at k1, v1, plus k2, v2, plus up to kr, vr, okay, and we look at all possible combinations of these vectors, um, if, if we keep changing the scalars, for instance, and taking two, three, four, all vectors from these, and keep producing. It will keep producing new vectors. So, for instance, W could be called, this is, if you remember, recall, this is called the linear combination, okay? So, it's called the linear combination of vectors in the set S. Now, it doesn't have to contain all of them. If you start le letting some of these Ks be zero, you don't have to include all the vectors. So you can take two, uh, three, four, five, as many vectors as you like, and start multiplying by them by scalars, and then adding them together, and it produces different vectors. Now you would agree that you can actually produce an infinity of vectors, because you can choose an infinity of k's, and in fact take an infinite combination of vectors here. That that that's how you can take an infinite combination. Now that would itself produces a very large population of vectors. Uh, which is simply, uh, which can be considered as a subspace of, um, uh, which can be considered as a subspace of, uh, for instance, V, where all these vectors come from. So if, for instance, all these vectors V1, V2, and Vr all come from the large vector space V, some large vector space V, or some vector space V, then the then the linear combination of vectors uh, of these particular vectors, because it doesn't, it's not the exhaustive, exhaustive list of vectors in V. These are certain selected vectors in V that we choose. Okay? Then the linear combination of these vectors obviously forms a, a, another space, and that would be a subspace uh, of V itself. So the linear combination of vectors produces a subspace of V, and we call that the span uh, we call the span of these vectors v1, v2, vr. And what that means is, is that all the vectors, all the vectors in that subspace, okay, which is formed by the linear combinations of these vectors v1 to vr, is spanned by, that subspace is spanned by uh, the vectors v1, v2 up to vr, or the set S of vectors. Or so it's called span of the vectors or span of S. Okay. So basically, um, you can produce any. Uh, you can take any vectors, for instance, in R three. Uh, for instance, as an example, if we were to take the vectors one, uh, two, three, and say one, or I don't know, one, 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 two vectors in R three, for instance, and you can actually produce a subspace of R3 that is a linear combination or the or is in the span of these two vectors. So the span so the span of these two vectors is a subspace okay of R3. And clearly it will satisfy everything I mean the closure axi axioms will automatically be satisfied. Why? Because um, to be uh, to be in the span, I mean, what are the vectors being produced and that are in the span of these two vectors? They're simply linear combinations. So the sum of them, any two vectors, would end up being within the span, obviously. And similar and same thing goes for the scalar multiple. So therefore, here what we want to do is really look at this concept of spanning now. It introduces a, an excellent idea, which is that you can have certain situations where a set of vectors can in, and sp uh, can span an entire vector space. Okay, um, for instance, the uh, vectors 
1, 0, and 0, 1, okay, span entire R2 space. Okay, um, so the span of these two is in fact R2. Okay, so uh, these two vectors span all of R2. Every single vector in R2 can be expressed as a linear combination of these two. So these two vectors span R2. So that's basically the concept of uh, uh, spanning. All right. Now, let's look at some uh, varied examples, so a few more examples, because just looked at R2, for instance, here. Um, if you take, for instance, the, um, uh, for instance, the, the, the span, sorry, pardon me, the span of 1x, x squared, x cubed, and xn, these polynomials, okay, uh, the, is, of course, um, Pn. So these uh, vectors span, uh, in fact, Pn. So for instance, if you were to take 1 and x for the sake of argument, you could produce, uh, that would span all of P1. So every single, um, by, by taking linear combinations of 1 and x, you can produce any vector in P1. Similarly, if you were to take 1x and x squared, you could produce any vector in P2. That means any quadratic is simply a combination of uh, the constant, the x, and the x squared. Simple, okay? So you, so the span of these vectors is, is in fact Pn. So now, what, how do we test for spanning? This is a very important question, all right? Is how do we test that something is a valid, uh, that something is within the span of a set, all right? So if we want to do that, basically, we have to be able to show that if we were to take a linear combination, suppose, again, let me go back to our set, which is V1, V1, V2, Vr. So V1, V2, um, this is a test for spanning. Okay, test for spanning. So how do we test something spans a certain subspace or a certain space, vector space? Well. First of all, this is our, for instance, in this example, this is our uh, set of vectors v1 up to vr. So what we do is the following. We say, okay, let's say, let's look at the linear combinations. Okay, which would be these. And we have to be able to show that um, whatever space, uh, for instance, if they span some subspace uh, of v, so V's are some, and some space, some subspace W of V, okay, then if W, for instance, belongs to capital W, then W should be expressible as a linear combination of these vectors. So if we were to choose the arbitrary W, which is a representative of the subspace that it comes from, then any arbitrary W should be representable uh, as a linear combination of these. Now, if we could prove that, then we can. Then that proves that the set S spans the span of set S is W, in fact. So the span here we're trying to say the span of S is in fact the the space W, which is the subspace of V. Okay. So what I mean, let's let's look at a practical example. For instance, um, if we were to look at, for the sake of argument. Um, um, for instance, if we were to look at, so uh, let's just continue with the spanning and uh, let's look at some examples now. So let's look at, for instance, if we have uh, a three vectors, any three vectors, for instance, one, one, three, and uh, say one, zero, one, and four, one, three. Okay, so we have these three vectors, and we want to check, do these three vectors span, in fact, R3? Now, if we want to do that, we would have to do the following. We would have to show that K1 times a linear combination of these uh, three vectors, okay, um, would, in fact, be able to represent any vector b1, b2, b3, and r3, okay? So in order to be able, uh, so that means that we end up with, for instance, k1 plus k2 plus 4k3 equals b1, similarly k2 plus 
uh, nothing from K2, just K3, okay, equals B2, and 3K1, this is K1, sorry. So 3K1, um, and that's, uh, pardon me, so let me fix that, sorry, K1 there, okay, K1 and K3. So here we have 3K1 uh, plus K2 uh, plus 3K3 is equal to B3. So we end up, this implies we have 1, 1, 4, the coefficient matrix, 1, 0, 1, and 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, 3. So now, the question is, um, if this uh, matrix gives us a unique solution or a solution, uh, we will have uh, uh, values of B1, B2, B3 uh, for the, uh, the Ks that will give us the B1, B2, B3. We say that the, these three vectors span. How could we do that? Very simply as follows. If the determinant of this matrix, let's call it A, is non-zero, then of course we can easily say that uh, the inverse exists and therefore we can find values, uh, a unique set of values of K1, K2, K3, which will satisfy this relationship. And, and therefore B1, B2, B3, or any arbitrary vector in R3 can be expressed as a linear combination, which means these three vectors span R3 in fact. So let's just check that quickly. In fact, the determinant of this matrix is non-zero, which you can check yourself. In fact, it's three, I think, if I'm right. But anyway, then it is a non-zero determinant, non-zero determinant um, of A uh, implies, this implies that A inverse exists, which means there is a solution. So this implies that um, the vectors 1, 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, and 4, 1, 3 span R3, in fact. Let's look at another quick example. I want to show you uh, a special set, 1x, x squared. And as you can see, if I, uh, if you can think of any a quadratic, I mean the quadratic, general quadratic is a plus bx plus cx squared. You can see that here, uh, if we take a linear combination of these uh, three vectors, we can always produce that. So clearly these vectors uh, span, in fact, uh, P2. So that's another quick one for you.